Hi, I'm Katrina with ID8 TV, and I have the pleasure to be with the founders of CoffeeCon. We have Kevin and we have Patricia here right now. How are you both doing? I'm oh, great, thanks. Great, great, yeah. over-caffeinated. <laughs> exactly, I know, me too. I tried mostly all of the coffee here, and it, it, it's a good feeling. <laughs> um, so let's get started, and you know, tell me a little bit about, about CoffeeCon, how you got started, how you came up with the name, um, just more of the background about this convention. Well, I, I think what happened is I had written two books on coffee. I've got a video on coffee. I've done you know, teaching people about coffee. I've been writing about coffee since the mid-90s, and I accidentally started writing about it when a friend criticized me for spending too much time making coffee. He said, maybe you should write about coffee, and I did. So I just wandered into it, and then finally our small town, we live in a town just west of the, a large city, uh, an edge city, I guess you could say. And they came to us and said, would you want to do a coffee event? And I think they had in mind, they're kind of known for folk music and folk art there, that we were going to do have some coffee brewed at this folk art thing. And instead, I called up all my friends who were coffee experts and had them fly in from all over, including outside the US. And we put together this giant consumer thing about coffee. Because concurrently, I had also discovered in writing books about coffee and writing about and everything I could about coffee that I had friends who still didn't know how to make coffee and coffee is unlike wine or beer you can be a great wine collector and never have to know a thing about venting wine you absolutely have to know how to brew coffee if you're going to get into coffee and that's where coffee con came from exactly and one of the things that really amazed me when we we put together the first coffee con is a thousand people showed up and we realized there was a real need people want to learn about coffee they're excited about it it's part of a lifestyle it's it's a hobby for many people and everything they're just in, so enthusiastic about the educational aspects of coffee con no i i love that because it is very true a lot of people are so interested in coffee where can they get the best one um even for myself like um, wherever I live, I always try to try all the different coffee shops so I can determine which one is the best one for me, at least, like the taste and everything. It's a very taste thing. And, and just to analogize it to something that a lot of people might understand, if you're into uh, listening to music, and I love music. I uh, used to be a, a wannabe musician anyway, and I still love listening to recordings, classical, jazz, everything, and, and a home stereo. You have to know so much. I have friends who are into this and they'll spend thousands of dollars on the needle for the turntable and everything, and then how to set it up and how to place the speakers. Coffee's got that type of element. I mean, everything about it, you know, the grinding, the where you source your beans, what rows they are, what, what types of water you use to brew. And this is the stuff we cover at Coffee Con. It's amazing how much stuff's on the internet about this, but how the heck, as much as I love the web, how can you really use words to talk about taste? You gotta have the taste and you gotta, there's nothing like tasting coffee and this is the biggest tasting of coffee you can get. I couldn't do this at home. I personally couldn't and I've got a lot of coffee makers. I can imagine being a founder, I'm sure both of you have a lot of things that you know us consumers might not have. So, I mean, I think the the event is amazing. I love all the vendors and all you know the classes that are here to educate the people. Um, what would you say, like, if you could describe, well, Coffee Con in three words, what would it be? Wow, it is. Uh, well, it's friendship. Uh, I, 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 this is gonna sound really corny, isn't it? Corny sounds corny, doesn't? It? But it's. It is because I actually I don't. It is not a snob place, and it, I really work hard at that. It's family friendly, and it's. I'm sorry, I'm not doing three words, am I? I can't do anything in three words. <laughs> but I can't. You can't. So. Let her do it. So it would be, <laughs> brew, taste, learn. Yeah, that that totally explains everything that this encompasses. I, I love it. But I understand too. I'm probably the same way where I can't describe like three things on the top of my head. So we're together on this. <laughs> um, so if people wanted to learn more about CoffeeCon, what would be the best place for them to find out more information? I think our website, uh, coffee-con.com. 
uh, we've got a pretty vibrant Facebook page too, and I, I post a lot. I post a lot of long clips, as I'm sure you can imagine, where I just go on about how I brew, and I'll do a live clip. We're showing an unusual part of my collection that I'm using, and uh, it 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 establishes the look and feel of this place, which is all about coffee. Wonderful. You also interview the roasters locally, so we've been doing a lot of roaster uh, interviews while we've been here in LA. And we try to do that in every city that we go to because it's really important to, coffee is both a, an art and a craft and it, each individual roaster has a different take on how they do it. And they're just all amazing individuals when you talk to them. 